Hello everyone, today we take a look once again at the development of the European communes, a topic that we have dealt with now several times on Schwerpunkt, but that nevertheless it's always very important to rethink and to try to frame in a more accurate and uh, objective way. In, uh, in this mm, in very important part, naturally, not just of European, but also uh, world history, um, as um, it's been Perhaps one of the most intensely debated topics ever, it, the, the, the rise of the communes is, um, it, it's very fascinating because it's an, inter, uh, say, uh, an intercontinental phenomenon uh, in Europe that, uh, however, takes very different shapes in every area of it. Mostly we talk about this uh, revival of urbanism in Western and Central Europe, broadly meant during the 11th and 14th century, and we identify even certain, um, you know, regions that uh, gave especially rise to, to, and even in to to even autonomous political communities. Take Italy, take Flanders, and um, that had, in this sense, each one its own features, its own characteristics. And I would say that this topic is particularly important because great part of European civilization and also the the concept of strictly speaking of, of Western Europe narrowly meant, which is a, effectively a modern a modern age term, is something that passes heavily through uh, through communal civilization in many ways. The, the communal uh, inhabitants were on average, you know, uh, richer be therefore better fed, they, they were more educated, etc. And um, if you think about it, modern Europe effectively stems from communal civilization. If you take especially the, the Renaissance with the development from, from Italy and throughout uh, the, the rest of Europe towards the north, you see that the, the effectively the connective tissue of the, uh, of the re of, say, uh, not just the Renaissance in itself, but which is a, a relatively broad and kind of vague, in fact, term in itself. But the um, <coughs> the, the 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 development of a, of a of a modern mindset, at least, and naturally, m the adjective modern is also very difficult to 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 define. But nevertheless, passed through through the cities, and the cities went actually in increasing in importance throughout um, throughout the modern age, well before the, the same uh, industrial revolution, and naturally brought uh, in, you know in a couple of centuries this uh, centuries of towards this major shift of the majority of the inhabitants uh, from the ca from yeah from from the rural areas into the cities, effectively in, in the twentieth century. Um, why did this happen? Naturally, we, we can't give a simple explanation for this, but um, fundamentally half a century ago, the sociologist Lewis Mumford was noting that the urban center, by his own nature, is fundamentally exposed at all times to um, to accept, to, to, uh, to introduce new um, new experiences, I would say, and to become, in many ways, a sort of social laboratory as well as a pivot effectively for the economy. This is how um, the, the commune is born um, in many ways and stressing the, the economical side of the story is very important but there are definitely other aspects. Even the same economical one, um, you know, a common misconception that we have tried to um, to to reverse basically on Schwerpunkt is on ser several videos we made in med medieval society playlist especially if you go look at there you can find several um, videos and on the on topic of urban medieval urbanism etc is that the city was by itself and this was Piren's thesis but basically that um, a merchant place a trade center that developed for the sake of, you know, for this um, in interpre uh, I don't know how to say that, the entrepreneuriality, right, of um, the merchants, of this kind of heroes that, according to the Belgian historian, basically put in motion once again Europe. And naturally, this is a this is actually a fascinating uh, interpretation because uh, it is true in part, but now it's considered definitely as surpassed as it's been proved that actually the city is, is definitely has definitely this very important function, but the city in itself develops um, 
chiefly thanks to the uh, growth of the countryside. I mean, this is we we have seen it effectively also because that's it, it's in the countryside that productive um, that the productive means ex uh, existed fundamentally. These were societies that effectively uh, revolved around the crop rate as the base of you know of wealth. Um, the, the word trade definitely was important to shift uh, to import metals to to shift in this sense the trade balance but th the base of all was uh, agriculture and in this sense Europe made it not just because we're a bunch of merchants that went started going around of going around sorry um, <coughs> and uh, you know shifting goods and producing wealth in this sense but because there was a system that effectively and structurally already worked and was putting in motion uh, large amounts of resources and this started actually previously uh, to the uh, to the, the the communal civilization as we we intended in its golden age between this 11th and 14th century mm, and, and and it started actually the the period before especially during the 10th century the 8th century the, excuse me the 9th century were or chiefly the 10th actually today we will stop to this mostly because um, of reasons that I will say now um, during what was believed so it's a, it's a cause actually of urban civilization um, to to develop once again during this seigneurial uh, reorganization of Europe that is being painted naturally with very gloomy um, uh, touches, let's say, um, because of the the, the, the let's say gloomy filters, uh, because of the the second invasions, because of the problem, etc. And <clears throat> we don't want now to to say. Uh, minimize or minimalize, excuse me, the, the the importance of the second invasions. The fact that this was effectively an iron century, as it's often called. Um, but um, part of the reasons that, uh, together with the economical ones, were you know that were you see that in the tenth century, in spite of all the second invasions, Europe was was still growing. There were you know certain there could be naturally certain local setbacks on the base naturally of you know destructions that happened but um, there is no there is no comparison Europe as a system effectively started to to rise from the internal um, before effectively expanding in the external and this happened in these centuries where definitely cities already existed and they had a great importance but they however um, with na natural variations from here in the different parts of Europe contributed also to you know to to restart in this sense um, this is particularly important and um, it's something you can see best naturally in the um, European and, and Mediterranean world um, because essentially of the previous urbanization that happened during ancient times because of Roman colonization, Euro Roman urbanism, etc. So, especially in Europe, this in Western Europe and Southern Europe, this this system and was was already well uh, and stopping to the West actually um, was already grounded. The, the, there had been a contraction. The, the system had shrunk definitely, but it had not been wiped out. It had not been erased and if you look at the rebirth uh, of, of the revival of European economy it passed sometimes to the, through the same infrastructures of Roman times including streets road uh, excuse me uh, cities roads um, and uh, <coughs> bridges uh, etc and also fortresses because not just as ways of communications but also um, for a military function and this is why actually the 10th century is also very meaningful for the development of um, of, of um, the, um, the 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 say high medieval ur urbanism because uh, it stemmed in part uh, from a military function in the previous century that that accelerated didn't actually trigger in itself but definitely accelerated the emergence of 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 cities in the in the following centuries so <clears throat> naturally um, you have to be able to stress the differences it's obvious that in uh, high medieval Europe um, it's in particular um, in central and northern Italy that this um, the development of cities um, uh, in their f um, social laboratory function let's say um, 
uh, had um, uh, transformed into quite original forms that didn't exist before. You don't find in other European lands, but let's say that the the structural element, I would say, the strictly um, material, even physical uh, uh, element of the of the city in itself as a fortified place, as as, as a demic um, settlement, etc., had um, common features uh, in the process. So the the original dynamism of such experiences actually started, as we have just said, from the 10th century. Um, when the European and Mediterranean world, um, especially the Western one actually, was uh, exiting from a very long uh, crisis, um, triggered by several factors in the past. Today we we mention uh, three, you know, like the climate, the demography, uh, social changes, and all. And you can uh, naturally uh, that you can spot naturally. It's very difficult to understand the, the actual measures of these factors in in explaining the transformations that had started to occur since since the 5th century, um, but, uh, or before even, actually, um, but this is another story, and it's, um, it's been instead uh, observed how the insecurity of the 10th century, because of the Vikings, the Hungers, the Saracens, etc., was actually one of the factors of revival of urban centers. After this long phase of depression, that had uh, invested seriously structurally, let's say, the, the system, especially in Western Europe from the, the effectively the fifth century in a kind of sensible um, way. I mean, in, in, let's say, in, in a way that is effectively recognizable as a decline of urbanism of the system. Naturally, since the third century, many things had changed, but the fifth century century is a bit uh, from from the fifth to the 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 sixth, the very beginning of the seventh. You you realize that uh, much changes and and changes f relatively fast. <coughs> Excuse me. So during the tenth century, the uh, needs uh, relative to the organization of uh, of of defense actually led. The, to repopulate and fortify the urban centers. Um, this is self-evident, right? Uh, you can see it in many, in many contexts. Uh, it may not be so, uh, in t um, you know, um, evident on the, let's say, um, uh, the more you go, you know, at a single local level, right? Because you can find uh, many different situations. But we can say that generally speaking, um, urban centers were effectively sometimes from a, a sheer, from, from a, actually from a strategical point of view the only bulwark sometimes that could effectively stop the uh, the second invasions on, or around which however whoever um, controlled the city could extend its uh, power on the surrounding countryside because it had the means the material means to you know to defend themselves to to provide to to store food supplies etc so this started very progressively to make of the city a very important center from which not even the country's side could be um, detached. This is not truly uh, true in every place, once again. Uh, this is the truest uh, in, in, in countries like uh, Italy or southern France, uh, even certain regions of Spain, chiefly in Italy, actually. But when, if you look at, at France and Germany, still you find that the city is naturally um, something uh, very um, relatively new, or at least, especially in Germany, but in 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 France, that it has also is also coexisting with other centers of power that are actually rurally based. But it's the general trend, actually, that makes of the city now a fundamental place. Um, to the, without which you can't do much, actually, even in terms of public power, you can't um, you can't control um, base territories if you don't if you're not grounded on on, on cities. And y if you uh, if you see what how the, what the situation is, you you realize that in fact cities emerged in those countries that were uh, not necessarily more politically united, 
uh, actually the political fragmentation uh, brought in part to in favor in part to the rise of cities um, very much actually but um, at the same time you see that the, 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 the more uh, the most dynamic parts of Europe are actually the ones who have uh, cities in in a lar in functioning city let's say let's say uh, in a larger in a larger number um, so we're talking chiefly about southern Europe um, and um, but also let's say throughout all the what had been post-Roman Europe effectively and on uh, on the other hand you see in Central Europe in Eastern Europe that the urban model is exported uh, in in these regions and, and and it becomes even in there the necessary pivot around which building a territorial domination and um, this is so very very even if you look at the history of central European kingdoms look, look in Germany in Bohemia and Poland etc you you see that in there um, you know the, the rise of city was actually slower uh, it was more difficult for many reasons for chiefly environmental reasons the the, the areas were also dramatically less the, less populated but when kingdoms form when there are certain institutions that want to to extend their power on the territory they choose effectively a capital a center and they uh, especially um uh, endow it with uh, with 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 trade rights with civic rights they they start to, to make it grow, grow even artificially let's say and this is also a political game in, in, within the the, the 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 power because effectively the this was a, wa a way also to control the local nobility that could be opposed by these burghers etc so um, different countries have different histories uh, relatively to this and different or uh, and uh, different outcomes that actually however stem from s relatively I mean basically similar dynamics um, and this re, um, repopulation and fortification of urban centers, um, you realize that towards the ten, f starting from the tenth century, there are even certain centers that are um, uh, that that had gone abandoned or almost abandoned that that are effectively repopulated. Mm -hmm. um, this is also very interesting because during early medieval times, cities had um that had sometimes maybe had declined but the, the local populations had remained around maybe they had um shifted their uh, their their uh, their settlement into within uh, different areas within the city walls or maybe they had brought it to the top of a neighboring um uh, hill where they could also defend themselves so um but there is the a sort of re-expansion let's say of moment where the, even from a sheer demographical point of view, there are people need to find places to live, and some of them are actually already there. Because guess what? The old cities, uh, now that uh, yeah, they had been abandoned because of the crisis and all, but now uh, they, uh, the, the 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 political and social conditions had changed, and therefore uh, the, the now the system was expanding. And you could recover the uh, the relics, let's say, even of of older uh, of older um, uh, settlements so um, and still you realize that usually uh, the old Roman cities were effectively the uh, the largest ones even during the Middle Ages if you take centers like like Rome like Milan like Cologne uh, like um, Paris like London you realize this had been in fact all uh, all Roman centers and they um, they keep remaining that, and this is also proof to say that you know there is a north centric perspective that tends to um, to 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 observe the thing from you know the idea that, that there weren't cities in early medieval times that everybody was starving to death there was nothing, and this is naturally a, a northern European perspective because you see from that that effectively the north had had less urbanization had been less ur urbanized in ancient times so effectively those are countries where uh, urbanization takes um, different I mean it stems at least from from different um, parts let's say 
um, the if you take I don't know Scandinavian settlements, you realize that certain that, you know the, the Scandinavian city at this time it was just a sort of uh, local villages that got themselves together to, to receive from the king a sort of a recognition of their autonomy, uh, but there was no actual great uh, deal of, of, of urbanization. Um, the, things start to be very different, even in a, in a country that had been Romanized, like Britain. Uh, uh, but the same can be said uh, can be said also about uh, other areas that naturally had known uh, some concentrated settlement in in even beyond the the, the Roman Empire, and, and that so the the rise of these centers, you think about Central Europe, Eastern Europe, etc., where sometimes cities were effectively refounded. Think about uh, Lübeck in on the Baltic Sea in in the German Kingdom. That was a, uh, actually a, a Slavic village that went destroyed during the wars between the local clans. And then, effectively, the, during the uh, 12th century, uh, Henry the Lion refounds it, and that was the same place because you know cities are not founded in places that are not convenient to them usually, and. Um, and and there is also this kind of experimentalism, this idea of you know let's let's export this model and and and, and import it somewhere else and and make it work. And this is effectively also what feudalism did, because feudalism, uh, which is often considered to be a sort of uh, of an opposite um, world to to the urban one, actually was founding cities, and this was starting from since you know the very beginning. Even if you look at um, because 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 of the ecclesiastical organization, chiefly the Roman ecclesiastical organization was based on the cities. Uh, with every diocese was was in a city. So um, it's very interesting to look at the history of of of, of this, uh, human settlements at, at this point. There are cities, by the way, that are born in places that you would say, "What what the hell? Why why would a settlement be born here?" Like if, you know, some of the most important cities of the Middle Ages. If you take, I don't know. Um, Florence, for instance, Florence is a place that had apparently no reason to to rise in there. And instead, it helped. Naturally, there are complex um, phenomena we don't, we often and unfortunately don't know much about them. But nevertheless, um, th this this is just for saying that there are different ways through which effectively you you get to a similar result in a model of territorial organization of power of control. And the city remains at the base of our civilization in in this sense. Still, so um, the, mm, uh, the the another role that uh, another uh, figure that that naturally uh, has a very important role in the process is the bishop, right? The bishop uh, in in Central Europe, also in, in Britain, etc., had been effectively the the most important um, civic figure during early medieval times, and also for great part of a high medieval times, because um, traditionally his diocese was organized, uh, in, uh, had its center in the city. This started actually since Roman times. This is something that started during, uh, you know, after, you know, with, when the the the, the, the Christianity was 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 uh, legalized and uh, introduced to to reinforce the the imperial administration in the city centers uh, other countries had different stories think about Ireland that had effectively this um, you know monastic model for which that, that initially uh, also kind of informs the the anglo-saxon church then uh, with Gregory the great uh, there is the the the, in the English models in here now be being transformed into the, the, the Roman one, but um, because in Ireland, in fact, was a place that was effectively not urbanized. So, but that uh, is an exception. Usually, in the rest of Europe, also, in, if you look at Eastern Europe areas that had not effectively been urbanized in the ancient world, um, that is the model. The bishop rules from uh, uh, rules effectively rules. Yes, because he was a lord of the land, just like many others. And like all the others, um, but he uh, he controlled his diocese from the city. 
uh, just the other day we were talking about the medieval Flemish armies of organization and we were noti noticing how, for instance, in that case of the, 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 the low uh, countries, there is a, a more urbanized uh, and dynamic uh, area that corresponds roughly to the county of Flanders that is uh, that has this precocious autonomization from the local feudal um, uh, frame, etc. Whereas in the most in the continental part of Aino, for instance, there are bishops that are effectively in control of the cities of the local militias, and this is a prerogative chiefly of, in fact, of the German area. In Germany, there are great um, bishop princes, as they are called. Some become effectively uh, the one of Trier Mainz. Um, and Köln, the, um, the, the, the three actually ecclesiastical uh, elector princes of the Holy Roman Empire, so very important, and they were based on cities. Germany is one of those cases where basically the, the, the local political, the political organization of the local co communes is, is, is not strong enough to, to take over the, the lords of the land. So that effectively the, the the struggle is won by the bishops, by the princes, territorial princes that rule the cities most of the times, and um, and and therefore that conditions German urbanism and communal civilization, for instance. <coughs> Excuse me. So that you know, if you look at I don't know the the uh, Richard of Cornwall writing to to Henry the Third. His brother saying that when he was elected king of the Romans, having gone to Germany, he said, "Look, in here in Germany, it's full of bishop of warlike bishops. We should import the same thing like in England, because um, that was effectively a, however, still an exception. But the rest of Europe, let's say that the the um, the the situation with the bishops at least was was a little bit different, and uh, the however, still these figures were." Extremely important in the um, in the local in the local politics. I mean, even even in the, in the areas where the uh, local communes were uh, more autonomous, more more aggressive, if you want, bishops still played kind of an important role uh, within the cities and were effectively also related to the to the feudal world in part. You know, still. Um, the the papacy. Think about the the papal Angevin alliance that was effectively based on on a, the Guelph concept. That, however, bishops had, that, you know, the church had to be respected. There had to be a um, an harmony, let's say, between the, the local. Uh, now, making it very simple, but you know, in which the bishops still had a function that went even beyond, and it was mainly also political, sometimes even military. Uh, in this sense, uh, warlike bishops are present everywhere in France, in Italy, in in even in England. They think, yeah, I mean, every, literally everywhere. So there is no really no uh, noth nothing strange. It's a system that in different areas works slightly different on average, but it it, it kind of um, remains um, similar. Um, the um, and and the bishop is in many ways the protagonist of the urban revival because it's around the bishop entourage that was um, uh, glutinated um, was glued uh, um, uh, an aristocracy mm -hmm. um, a very mixed aristocracy telling the truth that usually takes the name very vague name of boni ominis in, in Latin which simply means the good men. I mean, men you can rely on fundamentally, that are uh, trustworthy people, that in fact were called... I it's actually a, a legal practice, a juridical practice that in this sense already pre pre-announces the um, um, the further developments of these communes from a juridical legal uh, and a legal base that stemmed from the, the episcopal prerogatives as well, when the local comitatus that usually corresponded to the diocese uh, as a district, etc. And these were men that, uh, in fact, were called in as witnesses during causes and legal, uh, you know, legal disputes to. To, to to testify, like to say, you know, these are not, uh, these were effectively real aristocrats, like people with money, with, with a certain degree of credibility. Mm. Not necessarily noblemen. Uh, there surely were, but this could be even the same uh, notaries or or people of a certain, because these the city centers were effectively the, uh, the place where new, 
uh, new aristocracies were being developed. Even uh, uh, non-military, non-noble aristocracies, because that served effectively at the time to rule a city, and they were being uh, they were effectively educated and and brought to to power also through the same episcopal clientele that naturally needed uh, an educated, a school illiterate uh, staff of people that that could work for them could control the city for them. This is particularly even in in the most important bishopric of Christianity in Rome. When in Rome, you have um, uh, with the Pope uh, an extremely uh, precocious uh, uh, administration that doesn't actually lead um, to one of the strongest communes because the uh, the Roman commune existed, but it was effectively choked uh, by the in the 12th and 13th century by the the papal uh, seigniory, but um it, let's say it, it was in that case also the 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 the, the hair um of the ancient administrative administrative traditions of the city etc so the things that went very 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 b far back in time uh with no solution of discontinuity with even with the ancient world in fact when we talk about medieval commune it's like a bit proposed. I mean, uh, <laughs> you know, it, this city is kept effectively living throughout uh, early me the, the early medieval times from the ancient world. I mean, Rome, for instance, that we have just known, it, it had its own senate, theoretically. Yes, it, it changed a lot. It definitely wasn't the senate uh, of the ancient times. It wasn't the senate of Constantinople that also had, however, fallen into importance. But it effectively was the, the, the local council, the, the city council, that worked and had theoretically also this imperial and actually uh, pretty uh, pretty dynamic ambitions that were at that point represented by the local aristocracy of the city that in the city of Rome always remain extremely uh, aggressive and actually very, very... Uh, intolerant to any form of imposition, and that controlled for many centuries the the, the papal election. Um, the um, what else can we say? Uh, let me check. I'm adjusting the volume of something. Here we go. So what were we saying? Uh, so from this group of boni ominous as we have defined them the prelate the the, the city city prelate um uh, started basically um profiling certain um uh, forms of um uh, of government that from city to city start to effectively control uh, the, the community in some way. Um, naturally, these m individuals weren't just, you know, uh, average people because being rich, being powerful, being authoritative at the same time also equated to, you know, have money and power, actually military power, for instance, together with the political one. So, these weren't just aristocracies that were born in the cities, by the way. There were s several um, the noblemen that, uh, of, of the ancient feudal nobility of post carolingian times that started to, to gentrify, to, to start um, leave, go living into the city and to manage uh, the local affairs, sometimes, always still, actually most of the times, keeping control of the rural um, uh, possessions, the, the castles, etc., that they had, but uh, even in this sense, importing the feudal model into the city in itself. Think about all the uh, city, all the towers and fortresses, etc., are typical of the urbanism of, of many of many cities in Europe. Well, this stemmed from the hybrid, let's say, feudal and, and let's say urban. Uh, a civilization that had never quite been distinct since the beginning, telling the truth. Um, so, mm, the... Um, and there is even a sort of democratic char character of, 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 this, of the communal development that is kind of 
um, evident because you think of commoners, right? That they rule the city. Well, actually, it, the the term democratic should be used very carefully because uh, the idea is that yeah, the, there was a kind of local council that together with the bishop, together maybe with the, the, the feudal lord that controlled the city. But therefore, the the city was still controlled by several political actors. And even in the local council, the uh, power was, um, uh, let's say, effectively owned by the uh, an elite, right? That could be more or less, actually more than less, connected to the local commoners. Uh, through the clientele, the clientele system that at this base is effect at this time is effectively the base of everything, but uh, that was still you know uh, an elite. And in fact, naturally there is a change over time. In, in, even in those cities where uh, you know uh, it, it's only with the uh, the enrichment and development of the uh, middle classes of the bourgeoisie, etc., especially in kind of the low Middle Ages, that the people for real, that is still kind of the the oligarchs, uh, per start participating with guilds, the, the corporations, the arts, etc., to the government, right? But um, even in there, there are, in fact, it's still an elite, and there are several differences. Even in most radical cases, um, it's, it's usually difficult that a city was uh, effectively controlled just by the people in the first place, and that these people represented the commoners. As a matter of fact, those communes that saw for some reason the, the rise of the very fast rise of middle classes usually um, didn't quite end well. I mean, the, the degrees, uh, generally speaking, the lordship at a certain point with the crisis of the communal civilization takes over effectively and um, it, it, uh, it, it, it sees, it, it witnesses the decline of, of the same middle classes. But this happens fairly late. But um, even in the uh, say, the moment of glory proper arrived pretty, pretty, pretty uh, late. It's in itself. So the, the previous part of this development was characterized by several powers that were ruling um, the city jointly, more than else. And so the city is not isolated from the rest of the world. As a matter of fact, it's it's one of the most interconnected um, uh, realities of those times. The city is effectively committed with, with, with into a lot of stuff, uh, uh, even at a continental level, um, and um, that's why it's so important. You don't have to think of the medieval city like the tiny cute little town that stayed there isolated and just so about mm, prospering, etc. They were heavily involved in every kind of imperial and uh, royal policy. They, they were vital for the um, the the dy dynamism and projection capi uh, capacity of the same so very important political actors that uh, were also pretty i mean not not always but they could knew how to be clever um, and to in, in order to yeah to kind of preserve themselves because also communal civilization it's it's relatively self referential in spite of all i mean the city in itself had uh, a bit of this sense of pride of municipalism or the idea of being the best that they effectively wanted just to make money but in order to do it they necessarily had to know everything what ha was happening around but not just around also 1000 kilometers away because that meant uh, changes in trade in the market they have to knew it to know it um, so um, let's say that not everybody obviously participated uh, to the city council, uh, uh, but just the most powerful oligarchy, like at all times, actually, arguably, you know. So, um, it's um, th this medieval commune um, is a sort of specific form of self government of a demic nucleus. Um, uh, which effectively is able to to understand um, to be self-conscious, let's say, of it, and to claim its own prerogatives. In fact, 
this is particularly important um, in um, especially in comparison to the, the rest of the um, of the inhabitants of the majority of the inhabitants like the peasants because sometimes there were even rural communes actually it is pretty pretty frequent commune is a word that in itself doesn't have anything specific um, the commune is just something in fact that you do jointly in common um, several uh, unions and you know the social um, and, and societies were called communes at this time there were several many rural communes very often we you know by approximation we tend to say okay the commune was just the, the city state that uh, ruled by itself etc but even the same city state ruled first of all it could rule over our city states um, but secondly uh, there were all these other rural communes that existed as you know communities of villagers of peasants of mountaineers etc that also had their own um, their own laws their own administration their own their own institution properly so um the but there is a, a great difference because as we said at the beginning not all communes are the same and um when we talk about communal civilization we can't but talk about the um chiefly um a model that uh, is proper uh, at the broadest of this first of all citizen communes and that uh, equates to a, a, a to a particular social institution institutional model that was spread chiefly in western and central europe between the 11th and the 14th uh, century it's high the peak of communal civilization being however more precisely in terms of um, civil development and self um, uh, political self-consciousness especially in central and northern italy as we know i've created a world playlist dedicated to the italian communes that is are probably um, at 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 least one of the most important chapters of medieval history um and um and still a drama and unjustifiably and inexplicably and uh, incredibly overlooked topic that uh, is one of those things how can you study uh, medieval history if you don't actually you know go deep i mean the, the world european system now was gravitating effectively around the, the italian finance the the political siding of the italian cities um and this goes dramatically unnoticed um uh, the, the 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 thing is pretty big now we 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 will be talking about them specifically because i believe it's still one of those it's an extreme right but it's a big extreme it's not an exception like one city that did one thing one day um we're talking about a massive system basically remained uh, even uh, beyond the the traditional uh, temporal boundaries that we have traced and that was at the base of an enormous uh, of the same actually uh, surpassing of of the me medieval times because that's effectively where humanism and the renaissance were born and from which the model of modern european politics spreads and remains as a cultural superpower until the the 18th century and this is the area um say of the po valley western venetian region and in tuscany especially because not all of not all of uh, excuse me not all of italy in itself in fact is also witnessing the, the the existence i mean the the predominance of communes um this area now we don't have time to 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 make once again the history of it. we have been talking a lot about italian communes but um also in here you realize that certain areas were kind of more feudalized uh, especially the mo mountainous areas of the Apennine, uh, of the Alps, these were kind of more feudal in nature. But in this kind of fertile plains or uh, even hilly regions of Italy, there were still uh, this, uh, in, in this, this. There is this enormous phenomenon of, of of urbanization that is something that 
dates back actually very very far in time uh, because uh, definitely the importance of, of cities is uh, continuous in especially in Italy for for so long actually every single uh, Ent political entity that has ruled over Italy, and especially this area of the center of the north, has needed cities as the uh, base of government, because there was no other way to control it, and effectively it was a nightmare even to control these cities, and nobody uh, basically managed to do it, so that the area, even in modern age, remained kind of, uh, you know, a hybrid, let's say, it was framed into certain foreign dominations, but at the same time was a, a great deal of decentralization of autonomy, because uh, it was also a matter of actual strengths of, I mean, a relation of of, of force. Uh, Italy was dramatically populated and wealthy, so in order to control it, uh, you couldn't. I mean, sometimes you had to to come to terms with certain things. You had to leave some space because otherwise, these areas would rebel constantly, and this triggered uh, in serious, uh, in in turn, lots of other dynamics that um, are kind of uh, important for the rest of European history now but in other times let's say that um, the, uh, the the importance of cities was was uh, was great still in the already in the Longobard kingdom in what had been the Carolingian uh, Italic kingdom between the 8th uh, and the 9th century uh, and that between the 10th and actually the 19th century 19th, yes, would have remained institutionally linked to the Kingdom of Germany and the Holy Roman Empire. Um, even if, you know, such link had become, during the modern age, effectively a uh, juridical fiction, right? So, um, it, outside of Italy, these communal institutions adapted, in fact, in, in different ways. Uh, the um, between the 12th and the 13th century, in the uh, general picture, feudal monarchies um, launched, let's say, um, uh, let's say, destined to eventually evolve into kind of absolute states. Um, you can say that just that that um, that only in the um, um, you. Only in the Italian peninsula, the you, uh, communal phenomenon assumes the characters of a, f of a full um, auto-conscience, right? Um, even if at the end of the same communal era, in the sense that um, in Italy uh, you have the only uh, place where fundamentally the single cities evolve into a sort of regional state, so that um, the the local, the the actually the urban institutions were transitioning towards uh, 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 solutions of of kind of seigneurial or princely character. This is definitely true, but still was about the city. I mean, the single regional states in Italy were, in fact, were were Milan, were Venice, were Florence, uh, were Rome. So effectively, the most important cities, uh, Genoa. Uh, so. so you realize that in that case, the glory was not about a general. Um, you know, when you name this these powers, you effectively refer to their cities. We're not saying, you know, we are kind of Italians, for instance. Um, they 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 thought they were Italian, but for them, it was more important to be Milanese or Genoese or, or Florentine. Um, and and this name stands from the city. It's not like a kingdom of France that is France because it belongs theoretically to, to the Western France. It's Francia, right? So it belongs to a people. Here, the, the concept in Italy is that the this regional state belongs to a city proper, uh, even when it becomes a personal domination, right? So when, even if, if, in, if in the local cities you have great princely dynasties that de facto become as you know important as the... The, the, the feudal monarchies, uh, the feudal, uh, you know, the monarchical dynasties in, in the rest of Europe, they still um, owe their um, institutional legitimization to the rule of that single city. And in the case of the Italic Kingdom, by the way, was uh, still 
a matter of being a uh, imperial vassal effectively uh, meaning that uh, yeah, we have seen it was a juridical fiction at that point because this city now could be couldn't be effectively reconquered by any power in in Germany. Uh, it took the, it, it took unified Spain to eventually conquer Italy, and not even uh, all of it. Um, but the um, the the concept here was that uh, the the local power of the lord was theoretically legitimized by a an imperial title which usually was an imperial vicariate right so theoretically these cities were always r respectful of the feudal um, hierarchy but at the same time they were effectively states on their own and that's the only place where in Europe where where the city is able to do this because there is no other place um, only um, uh if you look at um, um let's say uh, just to make an example during the um florentine trecento um coluccio salutati uh, was um actually effectively came to cl uh, uh, came to claim for the commune commune of florence the dignity of a completely independent state. Now, this was a very radical idea. Um, it actually, it, it effectively was put aside because it didn't, in fact, have a room in the world for the way it still was seen at the time. That that was theoretically with a Roman, a Christian Roman emperor, uh, the papacy, the two universal powers, etc. But here, Salutati was effectively claiming. Um, that this state was superiorum non recognoscens, which in Latin means that it didn't recognize any uh, superior. So uh, this was a, an ex a very radical political, uh, asset, uh, you know, affirmation that um, that was not surprisingly born in Florence because Florence was. The, I said the most democratic of all the Italian regional states, and it 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 also maintained this sort of hypocrisy that it was kind of uh, you know uh, respectful of all the various um, communal freedoms of all the other cities that Florence had managed, albeit with great difficulty, to swallow, effectively, um, and pretending that they were kind of the guardians of, of, of republicanism, of democracy, um, of against the terrible Milanese tyranny of the north. Um, so this was not, th this is explained not much against the, the empire, because effectively at this time Florence doesn't quite, um, yeah, it kind of has problems through the empire, but it was mostly with because of Milan. That was in in the sense the long amount of, of of the emperor in in some ways, but it, it was effectively an Italian affair, um, in, in and therefore such political theories were developed in in this sense. Uh, I made a video about this that is um, political f um, um, uh, thought in Florence and, uh, and Milan. This is, if I'm not wrong, the the right title. That, that I explain exactly that um, it, we're comparing the two um, ideological perspectives or the, the two political theories uh, developed in Milan and in Florence respectively that were one op opposite to the others and interestingly enough the, Milan in that case was claiming that tyranny was actually a good thing because tyranny effectively was was meant in the old way you, you know the 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 tyranny was the one of the Greek city states, like it was a was a this kind of monarch of tyrant that, however, was a public um, institution. Let's say it was effectively a, a lord, but it was still functioning. I mean, ruling for the uh, for the good of, of of the city theoretically. So, in that case, Milan was stressing the rightfulness, the righteousness of the of the seigneurial power that. Uh, in fact, was was present all over Europe. This is the point. <laughs> if you look at in that point, I don't know France, Burgundy, uh, the Habsburgs, or England, or the, the Spanish kingdoms. Well, those were effectively monarchies. 
So <laughs> even if they they um, you know they also stress in that case the freedom, the local freedoms, the local autonomies, uh, cust juridical customs, etc. Uh, you know, uh, there were effective monarchies, and there was nothing actually really bad into it. It's just that the in that particular Italian environment, um, the um, political autonomies of cities had been brought to an extreme, and therefore it was kind of more or less boldly said that tyranny was uh, necessary at that point. Um, and there is all a great ambiguity into this because fundamentally um, the empire had recognized such local governments, but these governments had kind of uh, gone a, a little bit too far, in, at least in terms of theoretical speculations, to claim their own prerogatives as uh, uh, autonomous, or like in the case of Salutatic that we have seen, independent um, political entities. Um, and, and much of these titles were fundamentally, uh, uh, you know, a bit, a bit difficult, I mean, titles, let's say prerogatives, sorry, uh, were a bit difficult to stress, because at the end of the day, the feudal hierarchy still kind of worked. So, um, um, actually, the Milanese were quite happy to have their dynasty becoming, you know, grand dukes of, of, of Milan, because that was effectively a hierarchical title recognized by the emperor that was still the, the major um, political authority. So, a great problem of the, of the local political theory was to legitimize their uh, prerogatives beyond the beyond what was the universal empire which is pretty um it's pretty s strange actually because while the emperor could claim this by saying okay i i'm the emperor I have to rule everywhere and i don't have to because i am chosen by god and that i'm called to this there had been a roman empire that what what all power is uh, should be about um the city what could the city actually say if not you know yeah i'm conquering my my power because I already have it, which is actually not such even a, a, a very different uh, concept from you know the one which the, the Roman Empire stemmed in the first place because th that's how it began. But now in the Middle Ages, in a society that was effectively crystallizing from a political institutional point of view, you realize that it was a bit complicated to to claim it, uh, at least. So. Um, just for telling you to to which extremes even such autonomies could could arrive um so eventually salutatis um, um uh, statement was formulation was uh, effectively put aside uh, for centuries until the, the existence of the old roman empire the, the old hierarchies was was effectively recognized but it's nevertheless very meaningful that this was expressed in the 14th century because if you take france with the Bonneville Royale or the Kaiserstadt in Germany, you see that you know these are completely different things from Italy. Why? Because they t bear the name of the king, of the sovereign, of the emperor. These are effectively kings of uh, excuse me cities of the king, cities of the emperor. Uh, an Italian city state in this sense would have never claimed. I I personally don't know by any title. I mean like in uh, in Germany, you even had those uh, Freie Reichsstädte that were effectively free cities of the empire. Did the same emperor uh, and, and granted such uh, autonomies in order to stand the nobility power? Um, but um, in fact, they were still calling themselves cities of the empire. Cities like the one in, in the Apennine Peninsula were simply saying, "We are cities." Point. Yeah, we, we belong to the empire, we recognize the empire, we recognize the papacy, no matter what. Not even when the Lombard League won arms in end against Frederick Barbarossa, they said, okay, let's disband the empire. It was not even imaginable, because the empire was, was meant to exist in a Christian perspective. There was no other way out of that. But they, um, they still considered themselves their own city. And this is something that you can see actually coming straight in that part of Europe from Roman times, because in, even in early medieval times, you realize that, you know, the local uh, uh, 
oligarchy, uh, city, uh, you know, urban aristocracies, let's say, of Milan, they, they had their own epigraphies put on, on the city walls, on the buildings walls, saying, I belong to this city, because this city is my universe, is my world, it's what I believe in, and I, I do all of this because of the city, fundamentally. So, even if they were framed in other things like, I don't know, the Longobard Kingdom, etc., they, they still felt themselves to be something on their own. And it's actually very difficult for, for us to understand today what this practically meant in a world where effectively cities were rare. I mean, today we are all used to cities, right? At the time it wasn't like that. Living into a, the city was a, something enormous, was a marble, and living within it li meant to, to live in another universe. I mean, effectively the citizen, albeit being more open-minded on average than the peasant, still reasoned only being centered on the city because that was effectively all his own world and there was nothing um, that's outside of it that could be part of uh, naturally um, okay we, we should uh, kind of maybe uh, blend soften such um, such concepts, but they're not they're not very far from truth. I mean, that were the horizons, right? Because also, in the city there was money. This is effectively how it, it, it really worked. I mean, these were systems that if you came to rule, they couldn't make you effectively richer than a king. Florence, the city of Florence alone, has had a higher GDP uh, product than the whole kingdom of England. So, you understand why you <laughs> you want to live in a city, right? And it's not a few. There is, however, um, certain areas of um, of Europe that always in the south that are fundamentally this um, southern uh, today's southern French area that actually at the time was kind of Provencal, Occitan, etc that stretched until uh, Catalonia, actually, so into the Iberian Peninsula. If you take certain cities like Marseille, Montpellier, or even Barcelona, you see that these cities had on their own, uh, let's say, a similar um, mindset to the Italian wines, because actually we're pretty close to them, first of all. Uh, there were lots of, of exchanges of contacts. Actually, the language spoken uh, was pretty pretty similar. Uh, I mean, this area before the, um, you know, the the, the northern, the, actually the Langue d'Oil was, in, you know, imposed in southern France, and effectively the Castilian was imposed in the, in the rest of Spain. I had an extremely similar language, and uh, Provencal was pretty close to Italian as much as yeah, there's some Catalan uh, is it. They had they, and in in this sense, this band of encompassing this area of southwestern Europe is pretty was pretty interconnected over the time because it was pretty similar uh, in terms of urbanization. Because that was the the, the contact was the, that was the thing that connected them. In fact, there was a great belt of trade, of um, exchange of ideas, of of uh, of of music of. Um, uh, manuscript tradition, etc., um, and 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 in fact, even if you look, uh, this, this relative autonomy um, of the southern Frankish and Spanish world of uh, from the the the, the, the with the monarchies from the monarchies is, is very particular. Because up to the 16th century, uh, the, the the relation between the cities and the uh, royal authority is pretty ambiguous. Let's be honest. I mean, the, the central royal authority was pretty soft on these urban communities. And they used that naturally to, to profit from it and to have a political weight on, on this. Then eventually the, the, the French and Spanish... Um, monarchies, states, let's say, monarchical states, developed at the point that they try to impose themselves very 
much and on these areas that however still remained kind of uh, more decentralized than uh, closer centers uh, the closer centers of the uh, to to the monarchy to to the capital. Okay, um, so this this is important to to tell in perspective because um, I believe deeply that the the general perspectives on medieval urbanism and the communal civilization are pretty pretty overlooked uh, at best like the, just google that uh, there is a very few about it that it's, that's our popular culture has produced an incredibly few amount of of material on actually the the largest system on the middle ages when we talk about countries like like Italy or southern France or this areas of um, Catalonia etc we're talking about a system that was like I think like one third even more of the Europeans at the time came from those areas the trade uh, power the financial power of these areas was enormous no other country in Europe had anything like that so the whole system revolved around this so this idea of thinking the the city state just like this tiny thing that doesn't appear big on the map the giant complex as i call it is is ridiculous for everybody who wants to understand what actually the middle ages were also because these were the areas through which the the same european civilization evolved over time these were the centers of real elaboration of all the um greek and um in the Arab uh, manuscripts, the, the development of technologies, of, of literature, etc. Sure, there were big centers like the Kingdom of France, the Kingdom of England, but still, you know, especially the Kingdom of France, actually. But it, it's... Um, it, it, there, there is a relatively... Um, there is a, an excessive attention for certain political entities in the Middle Ages, in my opinion, and and a very few credit to this other smaller just in, in, in size entities that however were effectively the 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 living hearth of 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 Europe at this time. And uh well um yeah okay uh I stop it here for now I just hope that you enjoyed this video if you did please share it otherwise leave a like or subscribe to my channel if you're interested in my upcoming contents. And for now, I thank you heartily for listening to me. I wish you a nice time and see you next time. Bye.